Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you about positioning in CSS. Now, CSS positions allow you to set the position of an HTML element relative to itself, relative to the HTML document, or relative to the screen that the HTML page is getting viewed on. So these are really popular ways to create different layouts or position different elements in your HTML file. In CSS, there's four basic types of positions. You can have static positioning, absolute positioning, relative positioning, and fixed positioning. And this is a topic that I think a lot of new users kind of struggle to wrap their heads around. And for a good cause, it's a little bit confusing, but in this video, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step what each one of these positions does, how they differ from one another, and how they can help you lay out your HTML elements the way that you want them to be laid out. Over here in my web browser, I have these two divs. So I have this blue div right here, and then I have this a little bit larger red div. And by default, all HTML elements have what's called a static position. And a static position just means that they're laid out the way that you lay them out in your HTML document. So in this HTML file, I have my header one over here, and then I have my blue div, and over here I have my red div. And then down here I have a bunch of break tags so I can like scroll down. And you'll notice that the structure or the position of the elements in this HTML file directly corresponds to the position of the elements on the actual web page. And that's what static positioning does, is it just takes whatever the position that you specified in the HTML document and puts it over here on the web browser. So the default positioning is static, but we can actually change an individual element to have a positioning other than static. And the first position that I wanna show you is called relative positioning. And relative positioning allows you to take an element and position it relative to where it's supposed to be. So let's take this blue div for example, right? On this document, this blue div is supposed to be right in here between the header and between this red div, right? So that's where it's supposed to live if it's just positioned statically. But if I position this with a relative positioning, I can move this relative to where it's supposed to be. So I can move this like down 10 pixels, or I can move this to the left 10 pixels or to the right 10 pixels, or I can move it down 100 pixels and it'd be all the way down here. The point is, is it allows you to take an HTML element and move it a specified number of pixels relative to where it's supposed to be living. So over here in this first div, and this is the blue div that we just saw on the web browser, I'm gonna just type position, colon, and now we can type in relative. And relative, this is now gonna set this element to have relative positioning. But you'll notice if I come over to my web browser and refresh the page, nothing happens. And that's because relative positioning lets us position an element relative to where it's supposed to be, right? And the element is where it's supposed to be, and we haven't specified that we want it to be positioned anywhere else relative to that, so it just stays where it is. But I can use other CSS tags in order to move this relative to where it's supposed to be. So I can use the following tags. We can use top, bottom, right, or left. And what these are gonna do is it's gonna tell the attribute to position itself relative to the top of where it's supposed to be, the right of where it's supposed to be, the left of where it's supposed to be, or the bottom of where it's supposed to be. So if I said top and I said 20 pixels, this blue div is now gonna position itself 20 pixels from where from the top. So the default position of this blue div is right here, right? This is where the top is supposed to be, is right up here. And when I specify this top 20 pixels down here, this is gonna position itself 20 pixels away from where that top was supposed to be. So now instead of being up, instead of the top of the div being up here, it's gonna be down here somewhere, 20 pixels away. And we can refresh the page and you'll see that the div moves down 20 pixels, right? You can see it's overlapping on this red div 20 pixels. And the reason it's able to overlap on this red div is because it's no longer in the like the flow of the document. In other words, it's no longer using that static positioning. So when you have static positioning, you can't really overlap any elements, right? They sort of just like push each other down the document. But now we can overlap things because it's positioned relatively. So here I'm positioning it 20 pixels from the top of where it was supposed to be. I could also position it uh, 20 pixels from the left of where it was supposed to be. So now, instead of being over here, the left side is gonna be like over here somewhere. 
and you can see that's exactly what happened, right? So instead of being over here, we've moved over here and you can combine these. So I could say top 20 pixels and left 20 pixels. And now this will move down here, right? So it's still 20 pixels away from the left side of where it's supposed to be. And it's 20 pixels down from where it's supposed to be. And the same thing works for bottom. So I could say bottom. And now this will be 20 pixels from the bottom. So this is actually a little bit different. So instead of being here, it's going to be up here somewhere. So it'll actually move up in the document. You can see that's what happens. So this is 20 pixels away from the bottom of where it was supposed to be. So that's relative positioning and relative positioning. Again, it, it's in the name. It allows you to position an element relative to where it's supposed to be in the document. But in addition to relative positioning, I can also specify absolute positioning and absolute positioning is pretty similar to relative positioning, but instead of positioning the div or instead of positioning the element, a certain number of pixels relative to where it's supposed to be, it'll position the element, the number of pixels relevant to the actual HTML document, like the entire flow of the HTML document. So I'm going to go over here and change this position to absolute. And instead of having bottom 20 and left 20, I'm just going to have these equal to zero and you'll be able to see what happens. So actually instead of bottom, I'm going to have top here. So we'll have top zero left zero and positioned. Absolutely. What's going to happen now is instead of this being positioned where it's supposed to be in the document. Now this blue square is going to get positioned all the way up here at the top of the web browser. And you'll notice that this red div actually moved up into the place where that blue div used to be, right? So if I took this positioning off and I set this back to static, you can see that the blue div moves over here and the red div moves down below it. But when I position this as absolute, it takes this element out of the document flow, right? So this element is just sort of like removed from all of the like HTML flow, all of the HTML static flow. And now it's sort of like on its own. It's like a lone wolf, right? So this red uh, div takes its position and now it's just up here sort of free floating throughout the document. So if I was to come over here and say, let's say top 100 pixels and we'll say left 100 pixels. This is gonna position this block 100 pixels from the top of the HTML document and 100 pixels from the left of the HTML document. So I'll refresh this and you can see that's exactly what it did. So that's how absolute positioning is different from relative positioning. It's the same in the sense that you're using these top and these left tags and you can use bottom tags and right tags to position the element, but it's different because it's a different scope. It's positioned relative to something else. In relative positioning, it's positioned relative to where the element should be in the normal static flow of the HTML document. In an absolute positioning, the element is positioned relative to just the entire HTML document flow in general. So all of the elements in the HTML page, this element is positioned relative to all of them. So in addition to absolute positioning, we can also use a, another type of positioning, which is called fixed positioning. And fixed positioning is actually going to use these top and we can use this left tag as well, but fixed positioning will position an element relative to the viewport of the website. So the viewport of the website is the view that you're looking at right here. This is the viewport, right? But down here, we're looking at a different part of the HTML document, but it's the same viewport, right? It's the same like web browser that I'm viewing it from. So if I say, position fixed, let's just set the top equal to zero and we'll set the left equal to zero as well. Now when I refresh the page, this block is up here at the top left, but when I scroll down, it's going to stay up here at the top left. So it's always going to stay at the top left relative to the viewport of the HTML browser. So this could be a good way to have like a sticky header. Like if this was the header of your website, you could just stick it up at the top. And then when you scroll down, it would just stay where it is. Another thing you could do would be to stick something to the bottom. So instead of the top, we'll say bottom zero pixels 
And now this will just stick to the bottom of the document. So it's down here at the bottom. And what you'll what you want to notice is if I change the size of the viewport. So for example, if I drag this up, it'll stay at the bottom of the viewport, right? So the window that I'm viewing the website in is changing size, but this blue div is always staying at the bottom of it, right? Or I could have this be bottom like, you know, 100 pixels. And now this will be 100 pixels from the bottom. So it's always going to be 100 pixels from wherever the bottom of the viewport is. So that's the difference between fixed and absolute. Like if I had absolute, again, it's positioning itself relative to the HTML document flow. But when I have fixed, it's positioning itself relative to the viewport. So those are the basic differences between the four types of positioning in HTML and CSS. I hope you learned something and I hope you're able to apply these different positioning styles to your HTML site. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.